Hello, welcome back to Andy Order Vault. Today I'll be doing a review on an IEM from Muse Hi-Fi. This in particular will be the Metaverse ME1 unit. Alright, let's have a look at what's inside. Okay, before that, see here, Hibi. So this is apparently a joint venture or some sort of collaboration between Muse Hi-Fi and Hibi. This ME1 Metaverse is priced at USD $199 and it is considered as a premium mid-range IEM. Okay, let's see what's inside. Black box. Very simple, elegant, no-nonsense affair. Okay, and the, the IEM itself, which I will show later in detail how do they look like. And of course, a very nice looking uh, grey colour bag here, which also contains a cable. And I would like to highlight uh, a bit on this cable here. For the asking price, I don't expect anything less and I believe this ME1 is definitely premium material. This is uh, OFC 6N stranded uh, copper very premium in terms of build quality the braid itself and also most importantly this interchangeable socket which will allow the user to use three different sizes of 4.4 uh, mm balance 2.5 mm balance and also the normal 3.5 mm single ended what i find very interesting about this cable is that uh, the socket itself is quite compact as compared to other com competitors and it's quite easy to install actually like just like this oh, done and you see that it's quite low profile for a interchangeable plug really amazing i love it and of course underneath here we have a simple inclusion of uh, silicone tip one is a uh, narrow bore, which is for uh, narrow bore is actually for ba uh, for base and uh, white bore for tribal focus. But I will not be using this uh, for my imp sound impression because normally I use foam tip. In this case, my sound impression will be done on Deconi foam tips, which I own. And lastly, of course, there are some the usual things here with regard to documentation, but. I must also specify that each of ME1 Metaverse carries a one-year warranty from the manufacturer directly. Alright, here we can see ME1 Metaverse is made entirely of metal. It is actually quite elegant looking with gold accent on silver color. Even the nozzle looks quite elegant with mesh there. The main feature of this ME1 Metaverse is perhaps this thing here. What we are seeing it is something what Muse call as shark gills. It is basically a, a cut out opening which allow air to flow through in and out. And I believe this also will impart huge influence to the sound itself, which I will describe later in sound impression. Very lovely unit. We will now talk about the sound aspect of ME1 Metaverse, but before I proceed any further, it is best to describe that ME1 runs on a single dynamic driver 10mm DLC with balanced amateur on the nozzle side here. So it is in fact a hybrid unit, a very simple hybrid unit. I would describe this ME1 Metaverse as a very strong V sounding unit and the reason I'm saying so because my ear is telling me that there's a pronounced boosting of the lower frequency, some suppression of the mid range and some boosting on the upper frequency. The energy level emitted by this ME1 Metaverse is, can be considered as very euphonic, very engaging and very exciting. In fact, among the many that I have tested so far, this is probably one of the most prominent one. Okay. Dynamic wise, I would say that it is quite extensive 
and it is also quite rich in density the transient itself exhibiting very smooth flow of harmonics right the tonality itself being realistic not exactly very organic because there's a bit of focus on being analytical and also a bit of focus on being bright the timber itself at the very least to my ear it sounds natural enough right despite not being as analog as how i would prefer it and i'm saying so because i have a strong preference to an analog sound which is closer to being very organic as for the mids itself me1 like i said earlier it is a v sounding unit so it is kind of a bit recessed as compared as to the likes of like say for example atemotic ER4 SR or even uh, Kinera Idun Golden which is uh, mid-centric or any IEM that is mid-centric however what I do like about ME1 is that despite being slightly stepped back with the mids it has good resolution and depth to it all right I'm hearing very sparkly and very energetic tone to the instruments it doesn't matter like you know percussions guitar strings bass or trumpets or air anything it just sounds natural to my ear and it offers rich density and richness to the attack and the decays i would say that right depending on like some vocalists like diana crawl or even let's say cine a which both are like prominent jazz singers me1 was able to impart good amount of emotion to the flow of the sound of their vocals right it has ample amount of warmth and density to the vocal itself and it is actually quite engaging to listen to mostly any jazz male or female vocal because even for male it is even better on this me1 because it will actually have a certain level of brightness or should i say uh, upper mid-range frequency which is borderline almost like on a pina glare kind of thing so this is not definitely not a safe tuning kind of approach for the mid-range it actually really is very bold approach towards the sound itself so i would actually describe it as very frontal and very well-rounded at the same time i would definitely consider this as a bright sounding unit this is a tribal head iem make no mistake about it perhaps the strength of me1 is the tribal presentation which is very bold very energetic very euphonic also at the same time it offers lots of air right and that is really amazing actually despite all the sparkle despite all the sizzling things i in fact surprisingly did not find it offensive or sibilant at all because the execution of that brightness is in fact reminiscent of something which i have heard before from uh, a legend legendary iem of atimotic er4s 100 ohm and we are talking about a very old iem right now the knowless uh, balance amateur single uh, implementation which was designed in 1991 and still actually available today in the form of er4sr so i would even dare say that this me1 has even more sparkle and air to it as compared to that atimotic which is quite amazing it has a lot of micro and micro details and it will definitely not be suitable for anybody who is sensitive to treble make me mistake about it okay you love treble you want me1 going to the lower frequency me1 metaverse offers rich and dense bass performance and responses it is almost strong enough to be considered as a bass head iem right because i'm hearing generous amount of sub bass and mid bass together flowing harmoniously with each other to a point that if i were to use the silicon tips the stock one and use the narrow bore i would not be able to handle that amount of bass so that's one of the reason i use foam tips right because foam tips have the ability to dampen a bit of that reverb and resonance of bass right and in fact despite me always preferring a flatter bass performance i will not deny that the quality offered by me1 is really good especially for this asking price i'm hearing good depth and texture 
details and also the attack itself being energetic in alignment with the rest of the sound frequency uh, scheme and the decays itself going into sub bass it disperses very smoothly and deeply all right in fact the seismic sensation coming from this unit is quite strong which i think may be related to this uh, sharp gill opening here you got it allowing air to go in which it means also that the bass responses will improve it does not sound confined in a vacuum or anything it sounds very open it sounds very flowing let's talk about the technical aspect of me1 first and foremost i would like to touch on the subject of the sound stage the impression of sound stage because we are talking about iem here right the impression of sound stage is wide and open primarily because of this again the opening sharp gills that we see here on the driver it allows for air to move in freely the driver itself to reverb and resonance naturally and it helps with the sound stage to feel expansive open and big the layering itself right for each different notes i can hear it very clean supported by sharp imaging and analytical in fact because the resolution and transparency offered by me1 is definitely top notch right and on top of that not just that the spatial staging is all very circular right it is definitely one of the strength for being hybrid unit it helps with the spatial staging where it become holographic it is even suitable for gaming on the aspect of speed because i talk about resolution being analytical just now one of the reason is that because me1 offers very good speed when i say speed it offers very agile and very responsive to resolving even the most complex of recording so it will never sound muddy or congested regardless if the track contains so many layers in the mixing that is definitely a huge plus scalability and synergy and this is the most interesting part okay rated at 32 ohm with 108 db of sensitivity i would have expected to be effectively should i say efficiently driven by my mobile phone or something like that. yes it does it does sounds good all right however because natively this is a bright sounding unit okay if there's not enough power or if the power is below 1 BRMS, there's a tendency for the high frequency to sound a bit grainy, all right? And in order to fix that, all right, I will actually use all these dongles that you see here and I will describe how do they sound individually. Of course, my favorite here, that Porsche Heady has the most power, all right? A thunderous 775 milliwatt at 32 ohm and this kind of power helps me1 to attain to shine the best in terms of technicality it sounds just so wide so open and so smooth all right there's no hint of being grainy or anything like that and it is sounding very analog to my ears as well natural that's what i'm trying to say and the similar effect can be heard also from this ru6 which is running on r2r deck however on a delta certain delta sigma implementation of that dongle like this ibaso dco3 pro natively ibaso tuning can be a bit bright so despite this unit sounding amazing with some iem but it does not sound too well with me1 the reason is that this is already energetic and bright and this is also energetic and bright and both being very analytical so you can imagine it became overwhelming like i said earlier on me1 is a bowl sounding iem the best pairing for it is to find something which is a bit more reserved and a bit more smooth okay let's just conclude on this muse hi-fi me1 metaverse to me this particular iem me1 have a specific audience targeted for it it is definitely for those people who prefer the higher frequency to be bright and energetic or should I say the entire spectrum of sound presentation itself being vibrant and bold. This is definitely not a safe tuning unit and I'm saying that because some people may, may find that this sort of approach to be offensive to their ears but for those people who appreciate energetic and 
exciting sound, please use it. Okay? Perhaps I should draw some comparison. How does ME1 place into the entire scheme of things? You see, this uh, headset sound heard mirror, that is an IEM which is loved by many. Especially people who love bright, energetic and very airy upper frequency. The upgrade part for headset, hearts, headset sound heart mirror is this. I have no doubt about it. Because I used to listen to headset sound heart mirror quite regularly. I love the airy high frequency, upper frequency. But it has a bit of issue with being grainy and a bit digital sounding as well. Right? And also not forgetting the lower frequency being somewhat not well balanced. It's like a, a, a mis-tuned uh, V sounding unit which have weak lower frequency. But in this case, ME1 is a very well rounded V sounding unit. It has good lower frequency, it has amply good mid range and it also has this very nice upper frequency. In fact, the execution of upper frequency for ME1 is a lot smoother than Headset sound heart mirror. I'm sure of that. And uh, to compare with the rest of the competition in the market, perhaps I should bring here. I have just recently reviewed this unit as well, which is Simgod EN1000 King Wonder. The audience for this is that this is more for people who prefer their sound a lot, a bit mellow, a bit toned down, not to be energetic. It is slightly V tuned and closer to neutral tuning. Alright? And so there's a different kind of preference for this IEM. And then we also have this, my all time favorite. In fact, I use this a lot Kinera Idun Golden. Kinera Idun Golden is even a lot more flatter. In fact, if I were to compare this and this, right, this would be, even be described as boring to some people. But of course, Based on my own personal taste, I prefer this. It's closer, a lot closer to neutral sound. It is actually very organic and very analog. Where else, Metaverse ME1 is highly analytical and energetic, which also comparable to this another competitor, our full Performer 5, right? The difference being is that our full Performer 5 is not as bright as ME1. But the lower frequency performance is quite similar in a way because both have this open, should I say, uh, uh, open air cavity kind of system to support bass resonance, which will allow them to have a lower frequency which is flowing and airy. Right? So that's pretty much the comparison. And last but not least, you see here, despite this IEM being large on the larger side, it does not feel uh, uncomfortable at all due to the fact that it has been engineered meticulously by Mush Hafai to implement very ergonomic inner shells right so in fact I has been able to wear this for half a day without any issues without any kind of ear fatigue and that is truly something which I really appreciate so all in all I would say that if you prefer or should I say like bright energetic sound you are a tribal head just get this one yeah it is definitely a unit which i would highly recommend all right thanks for tuning into dongle madness see you later bye